Good morning. Welcome to Royal Bell in Conversation for January. If you're a dog owner who'd like to feel better informed to take a more natural approach to your dog's health and happiness, then you are in the right place. And if you'd like to know which everyday food you can add to your dog's bowl, then this is definitely the conversation to be a part of today. So for those of you who are watching this back, welcome to you. Please feel free, as always, to still add your, your comments and your questions because this page is always monitored and we will always get back to you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget we've added timestamps in the information down below um, so that if you are short on time, you can jump straight to the spot of the video that is of interest rather than watching the whole thing. So welcome to those of you who are joining us live. I can see a couple of people are joining now. My name's Anna, this is Alison. And Hi guys. we are part of the ProDog team. This is Royal Bailey in Conversation for January. And we'll be talking today about the everyday food you're likely to have in your kitchen that you can add to your dog's bowl. So whether you'd like to know how you can stretch your, your raw dog food further by making uh, additions or you just like to add more variety to your dog's meals nutritious variety then this will this conversation will hopefully be helpful to you so as always hit the like button let us know you're with us drop a comment below let us know where in the world you are and although we don't respond directly to comments whilst we are live we do always read them afterwards um, and we do love to hear your experiences and your thoughts and your questions. So do get involved in the conversation. And I think that's it for intros. So let's get into let's get into this topic. We uh, we really um, felt like this is a really uh, good time to have this converse, conversation, didn't we, Alison? Yeah, we did. There's, there's lots of reasons really why why people may want to to perhaps make their raw raw food or their dog food go a little further and I know for me at Christmas obviously we had all the the mail strikes and then there was the whole knock-on impact to deliveries and around Christmas time I was really running short on a on my uh, pro dog food and I needed to be a little bit more creative about how to just bulk out Rudy's meals a little bit over the the Christmas period for a few days so yep. you know also obviously budget is an it can be an issue for people at the moment as well so hopefully we'll we'll give you some recommendations that that may help yeah so, so where do we start Alison then well should we I mean the one thing I always say is you know your dog better than anybody else and it yeah. is never one size fits all so some dogs will do brilliant on some some additions healthy additions other dogs won't so We'll always guide you and help you if you're unsure anyway, but it's always just to be aware that everything we're talking about today, your dog might not tolerate tolerate as well as another dog. I mean, I say I've got two dogs here now um, and, you know, one does fine on certain things, another one not so much so. So just always to bear that in mind as we go through this that, you know, um, your dog might not be able to tolerate everything that we discussed today. Um, and I'd also say as well, if you've not sort of added any additional foods before, um, you've always sort of stuck to, to the main, your main diet, whether it's raw, um, kibble or whatever you feed, is just do things one at a time and slowly. Um, I wouldn't be adding everything we talk about today in the space of two meals, otherwise uh, you might not be happy with us. <laughs> so you might have the consequences. So just, again, just bear that in mind. Do things slowly with anything with dogs um, and watch and monitor because you know them better than anybody else. Yeah, and it's really interesting. I was laughing at myself yesterday, wasn't I? Because I was thinking back to when I was a lot, lot younger when I was a kid and stuff and I grew up with, with dogs and, you know, it, it was just always the thing, which I think is the case for a lot of people is that you feed your dog dog food yeah and i never really thought obviously until i got older and until i started studying canine nutrition and got involved um and obviously working with pro dog and and got my own dogs as an adult and i started to realize well actually dogs dogs eat ingredients just like we do like those healthy foods that that we will eat and obviously not everything that is appropriate for us a dog can eat yeah but 
but it's not necessary that you have to just feed your dog a um a dog a dog food yeah and that's what one of the questions we get asked quite often is when dogs transition onto a raw diet is it okay to give them cooked meats and foods it's like well yeah as long as it's tolerable like anything you know you don't just because You've, you've chosen to go for a raw species appropriate diet and you've got a few nice bits of leftovers at Christmas or whatever of lean meats. And yeah, of course you can, as I say, as long as your dog's fine with it. So you yeah. can mix and match. It's uh, it's okay. And we need to do what's what's best for you, your dog and your budget and everything yeah. else. So, so yeah, should we start with the economical fillers then for people yeah. that maybe are struggling a little bit end of January heating yeah. on full max and that sort of stuff. So grains is a funny one because obviously a lot of the raw feeding uh, world don't like grains and for, for, for you know, good enough reasons, really. Um, you know, wheat's not great for humans, let alone for dogs. And dogs don't actually biologically have any real need for carbohydrates either. They tend to get, you know, they, they get their energy from fats and proteins and, you know, small amount of vegetation. But saying that, you know, some ancient grains, which are gluten free, can be something that you can bulk bulk out your raw food quite healthily um, because they are low glycemic um, and they do provide some additional vitamins and minerals if they are prepared and given correctly. So, so oats is one that um, I use. I think you do as well, Anna, don't you? Um, occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say on that that topic because my dog is has some fear based reactivity, so he's very high alert. His nervous system is on high alert, and so oats and oats are very um, helpful for helping to calm the nervous system as well as other um, nu nutrition benefits. Yeah, I mean they're quite high in magnesium and and things like that. So. So, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is with any sort of grain is always soak them first. So mm -hmm. I tend to just basically soak them in water overnight. That's just what I do. I think you put yours in boiling water in the morning for an hour. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the reason being is it just makes them more digestible. So they've got like what's called fiats. So you break those down, drain the water off. And then if you want to cook it, cook it as a porridge. You can add that. Mine prefer it like that personally, but then I've got fussy poodles in the mix. Um, or you can just, once once it's been soaked, you can just literally add add them into the meal. So A, it offers more, more calories. It can help maintain weight. So certainly a lot of dogs that um, have got nervous energy or very, very active and working dogs and struggle, struggle to keep weight um, at certain times of the year. Oats are always a, a good thing, if tolerable, again, to add yeah. in um, to the diet to, to, you know, A, keep the weight on and B, save a little bit of cost. So, um, again, like anything, if you've got a very itchy dog or dogs that really itch, it's something that you would really sort of do with caution. Um, you know, if you're not sure about them, just add a very, very small amount and watch your dog. Um, but as I say, if you've got very itchy dogs or yeasty dogs or dogs with issues, it might these might not be for you. And also, um, it's when you say watch your dog, obviously their toilet ha habits are, at, are, are crucial to all of this. So I know it's a gross topic, but we talk all day about dog poo <laughs> <laughs> because it's one of the best indicators as to what may, may, may be agreeing with them and not, not agreeing with them. So, you know, just pay close attention to the quality of their poos and their toilet habits. Yeah, and you will get, if you do add um, sort of oats in or any of the sort of um, extra sort of carbohydrate type um, foods, then you will get a more voluminous stool anyway. Or, or, or for some dogs that struggle with, with bone content, it actually improves the stool somewhat. It makes it, you know, sort of a more solid and less less crumbly with some dogs as well. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, so that those are oats. Um, another one that's um, quite a good one is cooked sweet potato. Um, as I say, it's low glycemic again. It's quite high in fiber, um, and sweet potatoes are actually quite nutritious. But again, um, because dogs struggle uh, breaking these things down, um, then it's always always advised to cook and mash mash it up uh, so that they get all the they get the benefits of the vitamins and minerals from it as well. Um, so yeah, just don't cook, don't give those raw. Um, quinoa is another one. Um, I mean, that's 
not necessarily cheap, although you, you can, um, but it does sort of, you know, um, swell up quite a lot. So again, that needs to be soaked and cooked before you give as well and not raw. It's quite a nutty, a nutty sort of a smell and taste. But that's, it's quite, quite high in protein as well. Yeah, it's it? a more higher protein type grain um but yeah you can you can add that in if again if, if tolerable with your dog so i say with all of those sorts of foods please do always cook and soak and feed appropriately because if you just throw sort of raw oats in um you're not they're not going to get the benefit from it and it might just cause more gastric upset so with those you can do depending on your dog again up to maybe a third of the overall diet i wouldn't go any further than that so i think you add about two or three tablespoons. I, know, I, I give you three tablespoons of oats soaked in boiling water for an hour um, in his morning meal. So it's just just his morning meal. Don't put it in his evening meal. So it's not a great it's not a great deal. And because we, I mean, he's a big dog. He's 40 kilos and he's got a lot of nervous energy, as we said. So he burn that off quite, quite easily. Yeah. So things things to look for with any sort of grain that you're adding is um, any excess gas, any sort of diarrhea, as I say, they might have a bit more volume of stool, um, but you should be able to pick it up easily. Um, and if you get a dog that's got increased itching or anything like that, then avoid those um, yeah. if that's the only thing that you've changed in the diet. Yeah. So, yeah, the next one is eggs. Eggs are something that most people have in the house and they're quite readily available. And they are a really, really good nutrient superfood. And to be honest, we do advise on a lot of pages on our website, even if you're feeding a really good raw diet as pro dog and a complete diet, eggs are always great to add into the mix anyway. Um, because they've got, you know, they're a complete source of protein, really great essential fatty acids, vitamins and minerals. And as I say, choline which is good for the nervous system brain health and everything else so so eggs are fantastic um to add always better raw if you can but cooked if you feel more comfortable with cooked or your dog does better on cooked then please feel free to to cook those as well um as i say it's always good to to find a good source of of eggs so free range pastured if you can I'm lucky that we've got a nice farm up the road that really looks after them. Although with bird flu at the minute, they're being locked in, unfortunately. But they're uh, they're always out proper sort of, you know, on pasture and grass and really nice eggs. So you can feed the whole egg. Um, so yeah, the white, the yolk, the membrane's really good because it's full of collagen and can, you know, all the sort of good stuff in there. And even the shell, if your dog will eat it, um, the shed's fine. Yeah, because um, obviously that's, full of calcium as well, well. egg actually well i found for my dog egg is a, is a real treat for him he loves it oh he i think one of my yeah winnie would definitely live on chicken wings and eggs if i let her she just <laughs> absolutely even when i because i eat a lot of eggs I, I love eggs but as i say if i'm having a nice boiled egg in the morning that's the only time she really scavenges in it's like give me some i was like nope it's for me so, yes, yeah, so if your dog's intolerant to chicken eggs, then you can always see if you can get duck eggs. As I say, they might be a bit more expensive. And quail eggs, again, they're only tiny um, and they will be expensive. So not really a budget type food to add, but but you can do if your dog doesn't do well. And the thing, the good thing with quail eggs is because they're so small and you're if you're unsure if they're not great with um, chicken eggs, then that might be one just to try um and see if they get a reaction and or if they can tolerate those and then at least you know that way and and with these things that we're talking about in terms of quantities so if people are say adding in you know some oats say into their dog's uh, meal should they then be reducing the the raw dog food or the you know whatever other dog food they've put in with it yeah i mean it, it depends what you what why you're adding them in in the first place um yeah. i mean oats obviously depending how much you put in um and it depends on the size of your dog um obviously you know a, a tablespoon for a 40 kilo dog compared to a chihuahua is going to make a big massive difference so yeah, yeah with anything monitor the weight but yeah. as i say um eggs I just add in generally because they're, they're a good thing to add in. But as I say, I've got large dogs. Most dogs do fine with just a couple of eggs a week, no matter what the size. But like with anything, just monitor the weight, body shape. Yeah. And if you're feeling that they're putting on a bit of weight, 
then obviously reduce the food down a little bit. And on that topic as well, and we'll share the link in the in the comments after, if you uh, visit our Lean Dog Squad landing page, we've got a really great video there that Dr. Nick Thompson has kindly done for us, which is all about body scoring. So he talks you through how you can body condition score your, your own dog so you can start keeping a, a track of, of their weight and making sure that they're they're lean and trim. So I will I'll share the link for that in the comments after as well. Yeah, great. Um, so the, the other thing you can add is is uh, raw meaty bones as varying different types, um, which can be cheaper that you can bulk out. Um, so chicken feet, wings, feet, necks, um, you know, especially if you can get them either from a local raw food shop or supermarket normally stock, certainly chicken wings and stuff in the frozen section. Um, and obviously they're really good for dental health as well, um, crunching stimulation. So you can bulk those out a little bit. Um, but as I say, don't overgo mad with bones if just for obvious reasons that you don't want to upset the balance too much and make your dog constipated. So rule of thumb with me is um, if I've given mine quite a few bones and extra meals in a day, then I will feed our uh, beef and green trite, which is a boneless meal from Pro yeah. Dog for the next one, or add some extra boneless food in. But as yeah. I say, just monitor your dog's stools. As I say every dog is different with how much bone they can tolerate. Yeah. Some some do really well with lots. Some don't do well with much at all. So it all depends on your dog again. And and obviously it's it's gut health because that does affect it how they how they digest it as well. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, um, I think the next one did we say it was oily fish? Yeah. Those are also good things to add in. So. Um, as I say, certainly if um, certainly if your dog's not a fan of um, any of the, the raw fish meals, which mine don't particularly like raw fish, I have to say, um, you can get frozen sprats quite economically, um, or um, you know you can get sort of the value tinned oily fish. Would always sort of avoid tuna because it can be it's one of those fishes that accumulates mercury and mercury and heavy metals, so it's not one that I would particularly ever add. Um, but sardines are a great superfood, um, as is mackerel. Um, so you can get those quite economically in the supermarket, um, as a pilchards, obviously. Pilchards tend to be in um, tomato sauce. So yeah. I would just always, if you need on a budget, get the cheapest ones, even if you get the ones in brine, but make sure you rinse them, rinse them thoroughly so that you're not giving your dog a load of extra salt and then feed them that way. Um, obviously full of nutrients and extra omega-3, which is really great. Um, and mine, mine do love um, sardines and mackerel, I have to say. Uh, you can feed it as a meal, depending on the size of your dog, or mix some in to, uh, to you know, your, your, any meal, really, whether it's raw or if you're feeding any other sort of diet to your dogs. So... Just the only one, the only exception with uh, anything in oil is just be careful, especially if it's sunflower oil, um, because it's so high in omega-6 that yeah. you're really negating the benefits of the omega-3 in the fish. So uh, olive oil is not too bad, but spring water is normally the better one. But again, they're, they're more expensive. So as long as you're rinsing any of the cheaper versions of the, the sauces off before you feed them, then they're generally fine. Yeah, brilliant. So the other thing is the reduced section. Um, as I say, I tend to always scour that anyway um, because um, my, which is only a little supermarket to be fair, um, does stock things like hearts and, and you know, kidneys and things like that and liver. Um, so if there's anything like that, even some rib bones, um, I'll sometimes pick those up. So as long as you've got plenty of freezer space, because um, obviously you want to be freezing these first if you can before. Yeah. So let's talk, just talk through for people who, who don't know. So if you're buying food packaged from a super, uh, meat uh, or offal packaged from a supermarket, if it's fresh, as in not frozen, when you bring it home, you should be putting it in the freezer, shouldn't you? Yeah, you should freeze it for one to two weeks, really. Fish, the fish a minimum of two weeks just to kill any potential bacteria or parasites that might be in there. And then defrost 
and I then defrost and serve. Yeah, I'd, I'd always be, you know, don't go overboard with any offal, especially liver. Um, a because it's very, very rich. You don't need a lot, um, and you obviously don't want to uh, cause the squits either. So, um, so yeah, um, just freeze anything like that. But as I say, and don't overdo the offal at all. I mean, heart's not really classed as an offal anyway. It's a muscle meat, so heart's not too bad, but certainly kidneys and liver or anything like that, you just want to keep to a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. And and then this, the next tip we were going to talk about, and this is one you gave to me, and for whatever, I mean, it's a, it, it might be an obvious one, but it wasn't obvious to me, which was to befriend your local butcher. Yeah. Because <laughs> they got all kinds of great stuff to feed your Well, they butcher. are, and I buy my... I, I, buy local as much as I can yeah. just because I believe in that and um you know I my butcher whatsapps me and says because you know Zinni says Alison I've got x y and z uh near enough like I can't sell it to any customers he either gives it me for peanuts or for nothing but well, yeah. then in return I buy all my meat from him so I get all sorts of like chicken I had chicken hearts off him for nothing and you know all sorts of stuff um so it's always worth as I say if you do, if you can shop local, it's just, you know, telling your butcher that your dog's raw fed and if he's got anything that, he, you know, he can't, he basically can't sell and he needs to and better than wasting it, you know, you might be able to strike something up there. Yeah, I got some um, ribs, meaty ribs uh, from my butcher the other day as an off cut and my dog loved them and it, also for that kind of thing because it takes a bit of a, a while for him to chomp on them. Yeah. It was um, quite entertaining for him for half an hour or so he's, he's a bit of a power chewer so so he loved that but obviously like we've said earlier when when you are feeding as Alison said earlier if you are feeding additional bones in that way um it's really important to make sure that you balance it out in terms of the meals that you're then feeding um the pro dog do do a, a boneless option which is our beef and green tripe so I always use that to balance out uh, additional uh, bone content that I might be I might be feeding my dog as well I just want to I know um, you'd already mentioned that Alison but I just want to reiterate these things for people who are joined because I can see some people are joining later on yeah sure um, yeah either that you know if, and if you've got a smallish dog you can always you know do boneless fish boneless sardines uh, you know a little bit of extra oil uh, in the diet just to make th make sure that things are moving but as I say, just, uh, yeah, you just don't want to feed a load of extra bones and then your dog struggling to go to the yeah. toilet because that's what nobody nobody wants to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as I say, veg again, you can sort of bulk out with veg. And we have this conversation with people that, you know, dogs need to lose a little bit of weight and it's part of the lean dog squad um, where, you know, if your dog feel feed feels hungry and you know because obviously we reduce the food you can sort of bulk it out with with some veg um again if you've got very itchy dogs i would maybe only stick to greens a small amount of greens mm -hmm. certainly not the root vegetables like sweet potato like um carrots butternut squashes things like that um but you know if you've got farmers markets or you know you shop seasonal even some of these local sort of you know organic um places that do veggie boxes things like that you can batch buy it and you can just either pulp it it's always better to pulp veg or lightly steam it um yeah. because they just struggle dogs struggle with breaking down the cellulose wall of veg so basically it would only just act as fiber and they wouldn't benefit from the, the nutrients that you know, there's a lot of great nutrients in greens and antioxidants. So, yeah, so you can always batch it and freeze it. And that, that's fine. Add it in. Um, as I say, um, you can add that up to, depending what diet that they're already fed, sort of between 10 and 20 percent. But as I say, uh, if you have got very itchy dogs, start slowly and work up and see what's tolerable. Um, and mm -hmm. as I say, like I've said a hundred times, avoid root and starchy vegetables <clears throat> if you've got very itchy dogs. But you can buy wonky veg. We've got, I think, ours yeah. does wonky veg where it's not the uh, the the ideal type and size and look. Um, not pretty. Markets don't like those. So, yeah. so yeah. So either lightly steam or which I tend to do because I'm just lazy and I can't be bothered pulping loads of veg. But a lot of people do. Obviously, you will you will retain slightly more nutrients if you do pulp it and add a little bit of water and then freeze it. But 
as I say, I just never seem to have time for that sort of stuff. No, me either. But what I do do is, because I do eat a, quite a lot of veg myself, especially green veg, and at the moment broccoli is the thing. And every yeah. time I steam broccoli for myself, I always do extra. Yeah, exactly I'm, what I do. I that's like what it. I put, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, healthy scraps and leftovers. So that's exactly what I do. As I say, I eat loads of broccoli. It's my favourite veg. And the dog yeah. seems to love broccoli as well. Um, mm. But yeah, any healthy scraps, leftovers. So any lean bits of leftover meats, as I say, if you've had Sunday roast or anything, um, fine to add in. Even if it's in with raw food, it's not an issue. Um, just make sure that you don't give any cooked fats or skins yeah. because that's what causes basically pancreatitis or increases the risk of pancreatitis. I'll never forget, God, I got a few years ago now, I wasn't here. I wasn't in. I don't know where I was. And I had the boys and Lee, Lee had made a big a big uh, piece of pork and he gave the boys more or less the whole of the pork crackling. Oh, no. And I swear to God, for about a week. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, they weren't at the vets, don't get me wrong. But he was like, oh, I didn't know. It was like, honest to God, they were like, absolutely. It was coming out coming out to some tune and a horrible, yeah. horrible yellowy colour. Yeah. Um, and that's just, to be fair, he obviously didn't do it on purpose. He just no. had no idea. He just thought yeah. he was giving them a treat. Well, so, and, and and for Doc, because fat is the tastiest bit, isn't it? So they will lap it up because it tastes oh God, like yeah. But, but, yeah, it, it is. It can, it can um, uh, lead to pancreatitis over a, a, long, a long period of time. And Yeah, it's because... Fats oxidize when you heat and cook them. So that's why they cause such an inflammation uh, in the pancreas. Whereas, as I say, raw fats, not so much so at all. And that's the important thing to differentiate, isn't it? Because sometimes it can be confusing for people um, around the, the subject of fats. But raw, raw fats, healthy fats, are one of the main energy sources for dogs, aren't they? Yeah. Um, it's just that when it's it's cooped, it just changes the the whole composition of it. So it has a different impact on the system then. Yeah, definitely. So other foods that you can add, if it's not necessarily budget type foods, um, is berries. As I say, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, cranberries. Again, all um, very high in antioxidants, polyphenols. They help um with any toxin load in the body they're also like a prebiotic as well uh help feed the good bacteria um help with cell damage anti-aging all that sort of stuff so berries are really good mine go through phases of eating loads and then other times they're like nope i'm not eating those so um obviously there are some berries in the our complete meals in product complete meals anyway um but as i say those are good good things to add in if your dog's not itchy not got yeast issues um and they are full of antioxidants yeah and they're low glycemic as well to be fair berries uh, i try and stick to berries when i'm trying to go on a weight loss diet yeah. which is uh yeah um other fruits that you can give and these are more or less you know in um sort of um you know keep to a minimum really is bananas um apples remove the pips um if cucumber, cucumber's good in, in the sort of summer months. Uh, tomatoes, as long as they're ripe, uh, never give unripe tomatoes. Everything needs to be right, really, if, you feed, if you're giving them to dogs. And as I say, if you can blend them up, even better. Um, and the one thing I give reasonably often um, is avocado flesh. That bulks the meal out a little bit and it is full of good fats yeah. and lots of, lots of potassium, B vitamins. It is really a, a, a really great sort of, fruit to add but only the flesh not the skin and not the uh the stone yes yeah it's a superfood avocado isn't it the flesh yeah. really yeah. really packed with nutrients yeah so the next one's kefir and yogurt uh, again if make sure your dog's tolerable to it i mean kefir is a really great um probiotic um, type drink and we do advise that sometimes for people whose dogs suffer with hunger pukes at, in the morning and need something before bed uh, a because it's it's better on an empty stomach generally um, and it is obviously like a, a form of, of food as such um, lines the stomach a little bit and full of good yeast and bacteria again uh, at the minute I've noticed they're all on offer because it's sort of healthy January 
in the supermarket yeah. so you can get the big bio bio ones for about a quid at the minute yeah and they do last quite ages because it's fermented but anything with fermented just watch if you've got an itchy dog or a dog with lots of yeast issues yeah and then bone broths yes bone broths obviously we stock a range of bone broths but it's it's you can make them yourselves it's reasonably easy if you've got the time to do it um so yeah any leftover sort of if you have a roast chicken or something or a, on a on a weekend then you know the carcass that's left with bits of meat on you can use that just get some raw apple cider vinegar which you can get from most places now um pour you know a couple of tablespoons of that in and then literally fill it up with water it's slow cooker for about well as long as it as long as you can do it really normally i tend to do mine about eight nine hours um and then yeah just literally um let it cool and if you've got any fat from any skin or anything it will float to the top skim all that off and it should go sort of like a reasonable sort of jelly um if it's you know if it's not it doesn't matter it's still good for them but when it sets in the fridge it normally goes into sort of like a bit of a, a jelly yeah and that's incredibly nutritious and you can have that yourself you know it doesn't have to be just for the dogs as long as you've you know you've used ingredients that you would from yourself and that's what's nice about this is a lot of what we're talking about here is stuff that you can share that yeah. you can both have and is also healthy for you as a human so yeah so that's the nice thing about it but what should what should people be avoiding yeah okay well when we're talking about veg then the things to avoid are onions leeks and chives they're all out of the same family uh, and they can be quite harmful to your dog's health um they've got something called i have to write this down because i can never pronounce it properly n propyl disulfide which is literally can cause red blood cells to rupture um so that can increase the uh, risk of hemolytic anemia and if anyone's ever had a dog that's had uh, hemolytic anemia it's awful um it really is awful um they literally just sort of become very lethargic tired um because obviously they're not getting the oxygen um in the body um so yeah so those sort of things definitely avoid um and don't give and it's looking um, at those things that are disguised in sort of gravies and and yeah and, 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 things, and, and things yeah. like that yeah um fruits grapes and raisins again um there's i don't think there is actually a, they've found a scientific reason because you'll get some dogs that can eat five or six and not ever have an issue and then one dog that can have half a one and end up um being really really ill so um they've not i don't think they, they actually know what causes it and why some dogs react and some dogs don't so mm. just just avoid like the plague yeah. you don't want to be one of those statistics yeah, not worth the risk. Plenty of other stuff they can eat, so. Yeah. Um, beans, legumes, pulses and lentils would not be something I'd ever give my dogs. Um, they can be quite, well, very inflammatory. They can be quite inflammatory yeah. to us. I think we all know sometimes when we've had a lot of mushy peas or something like that, it's uh, we get a lot of extra gas. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it certainly will cause um, gas, gas, extra itching if you've got an itchy dog mm -hmm. um and they because they're really high in fires they just basically combine to minerals and impair mineral absorption as well so um yeah they're like they're, they're sort of really high in uh, what's called lectins which are like plant mm -hmm. proteins and the plant proteins are what what they sort of protect themselves with from predators so they are quite inflammatory um when eaten so yeah it's it's something that i definitely wouldn't be putting into my dog's diet yeah i think oh cook bones obviously cook bones, yeah. yeah this is an important one isn't it yeah cook bones are a definite no-no um because as when you cook any sort of bone they go really hard and brittle um and that's what can cause um sort of blockages um you know cuts or or you know tears in the esophagus gut um so yeah just as i say as soon as you start cooking bone it completely changes the the composition of it um becomes very brittle and sharp so you don't want any intestinal damages blockages or anything really so uh no leftover uh, legs of lamb on a sunday yeah um and that's why we you know when people say can i can we cut your raw meals no for that same reason even though the bones ground 
yeah. it, you know cooking it still can make it change and and it just stops the dog being able to digest it as they would be able to if it was in a raw form yeah raw bone only people yes um high salt or cured meats and hams as i say um because of the salt content you just really don't want to be giving those at all and they, they tend to be hams and things like that tend to be full of nitrates which are quite toxic in themselves to us and dogs really um grapes and raisins we've covered and um, something that probably most people don't tend to have around generally anyway macadamia nuts but we put that in because at christmas they might have a mixed bag of nuts which you know they leave on tables and include those on the table so those are the sort of nuts that are really really quite toxic to dogs yeah and also another thing don't be tempted if you have corn on the cob sweet corn on the cob don't be tempted to give your dog the cob to chew on because you might think that it's it's quite a good thing for them and natural to chew on but it's not because they can't digest it and it can cause blockages yeah. so mm -hmm. although sweet corn itself is fine not the cob so please avoid that and it's because i was reading a story about it not that long ago um yeah i mean i wouldn't to be honest sweet corn generally i wouldn't add in anyway i mean i know some do it's just like you say we all know i don't know if anyone's watched those dodgy programs about uh the guys that have to unblock drains and it's like there's always sweet corn down there so i don't yeah. think many people can digest it well so yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't give, I wouldn't give uh sweet corn generally anyway yeah it's, it's certainly not the cob steer clear steer clear of that yeah so that's all our tips really and as i say yeah. i think we will answer any questions but um yeah as i say i don't know if you want to you want to cover these Anna, about just obviously for budgetary reasons any additional tips regarding our yeah story? i mean for, for um from the perspective of pro dog and our products we have um we have tried as much as possible to create incentives and ways that you can save money here and there because every, every pound every penny counts as they say but we have if you don't know already we do offer uh, bundles which are they're pre 